6 30 p.m so we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order this is the uh july 25th meeting of the merrimack conservation commission i don't i don't see anyone here for public hearings i know you're here for the uh for the subcommittee right mm -hmm. uh so with that no public hearings no public comment uh we'll roll right into new business uh first item we have under new business is oh sorry do you remember who was last you both sat in last meeting right so better for him since yeah I'm okay leaving. yeah would you uh sit in as a voting member for ellen all right all right let's see so the first item we have under new business is releasing wildlife onto mcc uh conservation commission properties who has do i have the most details about this yeah. I probably do. so ja uh, I jackie think? will come up and talk to us about that okay oh is that what you're here to yeah. Yeah. oh fantastic that's why you pointed to her yeah. name next to that item oh fantastic yeah if you would just state your name and address for the record yeah just turn on your mic turn on your microphone yeah it looks on okay how's that perfect good okay yeah, sure. No, so my name is Jackie Robito, and I've been a resident um, in Merrimack since 97, 1997, and I'm also a um, wildlife rehabilitator at Millstone Wildlife Center, and I run, uh, I'm sorry, oh, sure, 12 Autumn Lane in Merrimack. Thank you. Sure. And um, so, and I also do nature programs for um, New Hampshire Audubon and um, Beaverbrook, so I'm pretty involved in the conservation of wildlife and in the environment and I love greater woods and I've been there you know been stomp those are my stomping grounds for a long time um, so what happens at the center is in the fall we have we have so many animals we need to release um, and unfortunately a lot of these animals were found like on roadsides or in neighborhoods that people don't want them back and um, or in the city, you know, we don't want to release, you know, five raccoons back in, you know, back in Nashua in, on the roadside. Um, so we're always looking for areas to, to release these animals and hopefully, um, you know, so they, they can, it, it, they need to be sustainable though for these animals, you know, in regards to, you know, enough, you know, proper habitat, water source, food source, that whole thing. Um, so I was just wondering if, you know, if we could release some in the Merrimack, you know, in some of the conservation areas, um, Greater Woods, and I know there's other, obviously there's other areas. Um, so that's what I'm kind of here for tonight. Um, we do have an actual otter that we're looking to, re to release, but not till next spring. Um, and that'll be quite a, uh, you know, quite a, quite a release because we will have had her for so many months, so we'll have to monitor her and that, and that type of thing. So, but that's not till the spring. But, I'm, um, but yeah, so that's what I'm here to talk about tonight. I don't know what your thoughts are. I, mean, I would think as long as they're not released, like in the neighborhood, like at a neighborhood trailhead, like if they're brought into the woods a bit, Quarter mile or something, um, right? You know, Greater Woods, Horse Hill, those would be, you know, good places to release them. And where else are you going to release them? Oh. You know, right? And Horse Hill, yeah. And I was thinking, the thing is, these animals are—they're not conditioned, but they're a little bit habituated. So my concern is, I would not want to leave them. I would not want to release them near a near the neighborhood, really close. Um, they unfortunately they are used to some human contact because we have to do that when we feed them and care for them and whatnot um, we try to you know distance ourselves as much as possible um, but yeah bringing them you know in further into the like Horse Hill is great because that's really you know far away from neighborhoods and Greater Woods is really there's a lot of foot traffic but um, there's also those areas by the power lines which I think would be great um, because not as many people, I mean, they, they're there, but it's not as frequent. Probably would not be able to release them on the school property, right, without their permission? Uh, I, yeah, I would say no. Yeah. yeah. So just don't use but the school entrance. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they, I mean, obviously they, they can navigate there on their own, so. Yeah. Right, but, right. And so how do you know the area that you're releasing this can sustain that animal? Well, that's what I'm, well, I'm asking you guys. <laughs> I mean, I know, you know, in regards to Greater Woods, I know there's, there's, there's quite a bit of habitat there. And I know we did, didn't they just do a recent study on the animals there? Tur uh, turtles. Tur oh, it was just the turtles. Yeah. Um, so that's what I'm, you know, I'm wondering we, we, in regards. We do, a, we do have a biodiversity study. 
for Greater Woods, right? We have it at Greater Woods and we have it for Horse Hill. Right. Is it a recent one? Last 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, the thing is, we wouldn't know for sure. You know, I mean, we don't know exactly how many animals are there or, what, or whatnot, but it looks like to me that it's it is sustainable habitat, you know, especially with the, um, as long as there's a food source, water source, and um, plenty of, you know, area for the, you know, for the animal to roam. Um, what, we've what released at Beaverbrook several, we've released quite a few animals at Beaverbrook Association and things have been, and we monitor afterwards with trail cameras um, just to kind of keep an eye on them if, if we need to, so. What kind of quantity are you talking about? <laughs> just, I'm just, I'm sure, just, sure. Yeah. Well, I'm laughing because we have 20 raccoons right now. <laughs> wow. We're not going to release 20 raccoons at Greater Woods. Um, so, you know, we try to do them in groups of when where we find them or they're brought to us because we like to keep them in family groups. Like, so, I don't have at the top of my head, I don't know, but we have like a family of six skunks, four skunks, two skunks. We have a family of six raccoons, four raccoons, and six five raccoons. So we'd like to release them in family groups. Um, we have two fox that we want to release because um, we've kind of, together, we'd release them. Uh, we have quite a few possum, but we can always find people to take possum. P people love possum because they eat ticks and they really love them in their backyard. So we're not really concerned about releasing them. But people don't want skunks and people don't want woodchucks and they don't want raccoons, <laughs> you know, in their backyards. Um, so it would be groups, family groups, that we would, we would be looking to release. Certainly not all of them. You know, I'm in contact with the Amherst Conservation Commission as well, um, as well as uh, the Nature Conservancy. I'm in contact, I'm trying to connect with them as well to see what kind of areas they have. Um, so it would all depend on, you know, maybe a few raccoons, a couple of skunks, I would say Greater Woods <laughs> certainly could handle that. <laughs> uh, so. I, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine we have any issues of liability or concern that way. I mean, it's no. the same thing that they grow there on their own. So. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I've seen otter in Great. I've seen otter in Greater Woods. They're yeah. over by you. They, they yeah. slide. They slide down that into that water every all year on along the slopes. You see the little paths in the snow. Right. You see the, and the snow right. Yeah. Yeah. You see them slide right. down and all that. Yeah. Funny yeah. thing. And that's where I'd love to release our, our otter next spring because then I could keep an eye on her. You yeah. know, I could I could monitor her. But that's next spring. So we also have a bobcat we need to release. Believe it or not, pretty. We have we have one. In, yeah. We have one in Mitchell Woods. Yeah. It's been photographed up in Mitchell Woods. Yeah. Uh, you, you have photos of so. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, I have a lot of I have yeah. a lot of footage of Greater Woods. Well no, but Mitchell Mitchell Woods. Yeah. Right? Watkins Forest, Mitchell Woods is across the street from Greater Woods. Yeah. There's we ha we know we've got Bobcat in there. Yeah, that's great. We've got we've got a couple pictures of him. That's great. He was that's chubby too. He was he was well fed. Mm. So was it a she? Yeah. I have no was, idea. I was gonna say if she was chubby, <laughs> she may have had been a Email. <laughs> <laughs> she looked healthy. That was that was what. The That's cool. Or it yeah, looked healthy. I don't know what it was. So do we want to be do we notified when this is being done, or just let them let her do it? Or <laughs> I just want to. Uh, yeah, I can do it. What, what do we have to your discretion? Why, why do we yeah. want to know necessarily? Yeah. Right, exactly. Well, unless someone wants to be there to check, you know, to be part of it, it's I, I fine think, too. Yeah, I think we'd want to know because you're going to be walking up there with cages or yeah, some right. type of thing. I think yeah, that okay. might be yeah. good to, hey, it's okay. Yeah. No one's no one's up there trapping. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. 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 If so. you just let us know when you're doing it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, that that would be great. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So either Beaver. I mean. Um, Horse Hill, Greater Woods, and um, there is a path. Well, that's there's no trails out. I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's the one that doesn't even have trails, but it's part of the. It's behind like the, the track. The track over by Merrimack. Isn't there one? Scar. No, the track like behind the high school. N what's that? Behind the high school. No, there's a. Um, a Railroad track? Oh, no. The dirt. oh no, the dirt, dirt, track. The dirt, dirt track, track behind Isn't the dump. Isn't there a, pot, a lot of uh, concrete? There's the back, you're, you're backing up in the dump. Oh, forget it. Yeah. I mean, the landfill's right there. Yeah. But the it's, there, is, there, is, there is woods out there. It's wooded. Right, it's, it's right. Wooded. But no, not a, not a real easy access, I don't think. Not without going on the track. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I, I would say, you, you know, Greater Woods or Horse Hill for sure. I mean, they have, they're both such amazing. Do you have different requirements, square foot, like, you know, space-wise, for the, obviously for the different critters? You need to know what kind of roaming space they need? Yeah, I mean, raccoons, they, they don't have a big area, you know, um, but they will, they will, they, yeah, like probably anywhere between one to, you know, one to five miles, you know. Um, skunks, they just, they're not, they're, their territory is not that big. Um, bobcat, a lot bigger, but that's, we're, I think we're going to try to release that one where we found it, but was found actually at a apartment complex in Londonderry, believe it or not. Wow. Oh. Yeah, someone found it on their doorstep. Oh, that would oh be God. an interesting release. Oof. Yeah. So well, that's, what, that's what I'm. I'm not, I don't know if we want to advertise this that we're releasing. Yeah. That needs maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. Just you know, just exactly what you said. We, we, we want to keep people away and let them right. return exactly. as close to yeah. nature as they can. So. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, we just uh, anytime we post, we don't usually do the um, you know location unless you want us to for you know for for reasons of education. I mean, that's all we're about is educating the public on wildlife conservation and. How to take care, you know, how to coexist with these these animals. I can't tell you the calls we get and the misconceptions mm -hmm. and the trouble people get into. So oh, we we believe it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's really mm -hmm. difficult, you know. And you try to be, you know, you try to educate people and keep, you know, everything's cute and cuddly until it does, it's not or it has rabies <laughs> and or bites you or. You know, so we're big on um, educating the public on the importance of, of why we release these animals and why they need to go back into the habitat that they're from so that they can live a happy existence and we can coexist with them because they're in our backyard. So. Well, we have, and we have some private residents that have large tracts of property. I mean, there's no reason we can't reach out to them too and okay, see if they that'd want, be great. If they'd mm -hmm. be willing to support sure. something. Sure, that would be great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, how would that work? You. Well, I mean, we obviously we can we can put you in contact with them and that'd be great. Tell them tell them why we're we're having them contact you and yeah. And then there's really no need for us to be in the middle of it. I mean, okay, yeah, that would be great yeah. if you could yeah send um, my yeah, my contact information. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to send me the the uh, folks that would be willing to have some skunks or possum or raccoons. Mm. I wish I had land, more land, because I love <laughs> I do too, I do too, I have everybody <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah, I have rac raccoons that come. Yeah, you're yeah. Right. <laughs> right. You're a whole other breed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're talking my language. Yeah, speak oh, yeah. language, right, right, oh yeah. I'm not happy unless I'm feeding raccoons or cleaning possum yeah. stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or swimming with an otter pup, mm. that's been fun. Oh, that, yeah. That's, awesome. That's been great. So. Yeah. And I have seen otter in the uh, White Pine Swamp, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's a really good, healthy population. So. Yeah. And the health of the, when you see otters, it's the health of the water quality, so that's good. So, so do we, I, I'm saying, do we need to even, is this even a permission thing? I mean, we're all in agreement? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. I don't know if we need you're, to you're talk silent. to the town manager. No, I've just been listening. I know, but <laughs> to let the town know, you know. No, yeah, I've, I've um, I can do that. Well, because you know I'm in environmental science, so this right. is my this is my jam. So <laughs> exactly, oh, so yeah. you're yeah. being awfully <laughs> quiet. That's why yeah. I, I want your jam. Yeah, so no, I well, because I'm not I because I, I'm you're in wildlife wildlife rehabilitation, so I didn't want to. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm confident that you seem to uh, know enough about this that um, I, I don't really have to. Um, Really ask any questions? You know, I was just going to ask. Um, uh, well, one thing I know that there's an auto, auto population in um, uh, Wildcat Falls, but it's on the school property, so that sort of is out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been um, doing my sort of informal ecological surveys of each of the properties. Um, um, but you know, truth is, I mean, there's no place that's you know in desperate need or has an overpopulation or underpopulation of. Well, there's no place with an overpopulation of. Um, otters or raccoons or skunks so um, oh, good. I really had nothing to to add but um you know I've just been um okay I'm just trying to think of parts that uh properties in uh, Merrimack that might need, have a um a need for a, a niche filler but um nothing at my mind is nothing is coming to my mind so I, I think that 
really just even if we spaced throughout the properties would be fine. Uh, Gil Gilmore Hill. Um, I don't know anything about Gilmore Hill actually. Well, it's the other, it's the other side of. of uh, yeah, I know, but I don't know like its needs. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so I wouldn't actually know about that one. I guess I'll awesome in right there. I mean, there's a lots of lots of trails in there, but it goes down the water and it's got quite a large. Mm -hmm. Where is, where is it? Wasserman. Oh, park. Wasserman, yeah. Yeah, I mean we own. There's the park. And right. Then there's the conservation property on the other side of it that yep. goes out and, and and it crosses the stream and goes off into the back of the uh, natural fish. The, no, the, not the natural fish. Ryan the, the, the gun club. Yeah. And, uh, Horseshoe. Horseshoe, the, Horseshoe Pond, mm -hmm. yeah, Horseshoe Pond. Right. But that's all Greens Pond and all that area down there. Now, would they have an issue, the hunting club? I I doubt it. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, we certainly, that's what I'm saying, we certainly can ask them. And yeah, I don't, I mean, they. I would, but I wouldn't go on there without telling them where you are because they, it's a live fire. Right. Range. Oh, yeah, I've been down there, yeah. so, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. It um, is possible. I don't know what they hunt on hunting club land. I don't know if they hunt birds because releasing animals that eat bird eggs might be a problem. I don't think it would be a major problem. I don't think we'd see a major decrease in any sort of population. Yeah. But, no. you know, um, I, I don't know if they hunt ducks there or not. I don't know if they're on. Yeah, but I'm just thinking of like down, you know, Gilmore Hill kind of backs up into mm -hmm. Wasserman and all that watershed throughout there. And there's that big, huge field. That mm. is private. It's part of an HOA, private association, but it's just woodland. It's mm. something special. You know, it's part of that walk. Every time we, that we walk up to the bottom, back side of the dam, mm -hmm. that's that field that we walk through. Could yeah. you send me where that is so I can look at it on the map? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, that looks. Yeah, we have we have a. <coughs> I've probably no, no, no. been. There. Um, you know what? Okay, so would we we do our L slip walk, right? We walk up. We always end up walking up to the dam and then walk back along the shoreline. Mm -hmm back into Washington, that w when you when you cross that last bridge, we're on that little spindly piece of our property that gets narrower and narrower and narrower and, and points out, that whole field to the side is an HOA associated it's privately held. It's not ours. And it's just woodland. It's just mm -hmm. an open field. Oh, okay. That might be good for the foxes. So, you know, it'd be uh, more wildlife fun. Oh, that'd be great, but yes, we can. We have we have some decent maps. Uh, yeah, I'll take uh, a look. I mean, I've been in a lot of the areas, yeah. but some of these I, I probably know them. I just don't know the name because right. I'm just out bushwhacking all the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where am I? <laughs> so that'd be great. Get some maps and some some areas, yeah. and I can take a look at it. And it wouldn't be till late summer, early fall, anyway, um, till these guys are well fed and on their you know weaned and able to hunt on their own and all that good stuff so well, I think the minutes will show that we're yeah, in, we're in agreement yeah. I'll let Paul know just you know shoot him an email make him aware that this is something we discussed yeah probably be worthwhile make sure he's we haven't crossed some boundary we mm -hmm. should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if there is one that we've crossed he'll know about yeah. it but I, I can't imagine what that would be uh. yeah I mean, we've, we've given permission to, like, Granite State Dog Recovery to go in and, you know, trap a missing dog. But mm. if they happen to trap a non-dog, they would just let them go. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. But other than that, we someone would have to come and ask us if they were wanted to trap to kill an animal. Right. And, um, no one's, there, there's no, no one's reached out. Or, no. no so there That's should good. not be any trapping in any of our properties. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the Come across one. Let us know. <laughs> no, the last time we trapped was was the uh, the beaver issue behind in Mitchell Woods. Right, but not a, a resident. There, no, there no, are right. people we, out there mm -hmm. just yeah. trapping, you know. So, because yeah. you wouldn't want raccoons or to be around that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So. Exactly. You know, there's no uh, beaver recover relocation program, right? The lucidity rate is so low. Yeah. Because it's. Uh, our, our parcels right now are pretty much maxed out with what they'll support. Yeah. Um, so every spring when they get kicked out, that's when you see the kill because they're trying to find little extra bodies of water. Yeah. So uh, we don't have a lot of space left because we, we looked at, that was the first thing we looked into. To relocate and, them. Yeah, and they, yeah. we up and down the fishing game and a couple environmental, local environmental, like, 
We could try it, but the chances of you finding a pond that can support I know whole a, whole, a whole other family. I know it's they're just they're, you're, it's you're a just, lot of work. Yeah, you're just going to release this thing into a situation where it's going to get killed by the other the other beaver. So yeah. you have to go way up north, right, to make it work. And I'll be perfect. <laughs> We don't live in a perfect world, but we try. <laughs> as long as we keep the animals safe, that's all I care about. Yes. Me too. And the people too. Yeah. I care about people too. Don't, I was a nurse for 30 years too, so recently retired. So went from people to animals. Animals are a lot easier to take care yeah. of. <laughs> uh, Anyone else? Well, thank you for yeah. coming here. Oh, yeah. thank you to for listening. No, yeah. thanks, Mike. Yeah, we connected. So, okay, great. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So yeah. I just sit back down and listen to the rest of what you guys are saying. Or if, if you are, if, if you, you really don't. want to listen, yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> won't hurt our feelings if you leave. Yeah. yeah. What's that? <laughs> you won't hurt our feelings if you <laughs> sail out of here. Okay. <laughs> um, I do want to connect with you, Eric, because sure. it'd be interesting. So, do you have you have his email? Can you send yeah. me? I can send you Eric's. Email. Yeah, yeah. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Good. Love to chat. So, okay. All right, great. Thanks so much. Everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. The only other item we have under new business was the uh, the right to know uh, tutorial. I don't know. I sent this out on email. Did everyone have a chance to look at that? Um, yeah, or three hours? It is. It's a commitment. Um, yeah. It's a commitment. I'm about seventy five percent of the way through it. If you, I found a lot of things I didn't know. It, it, it did a fantastic job explaining. You know what is a quorum? What what? When do you need to have a quorum? How to take? You know quality minutes, what should be on an agenda. Um, you know, I, I thought it was incredibly useful. It's not, not for one sitting, probably. It, <laughs> it was a th three hour uh, session, but well done. So if you, if you didn't get that or you didn't see the link, I guess, um, just let me know and I can resend it. Uh, under other business, um, the Eversource utility uh, update. So we did. We talked about this at our last meeting. We heard from um, the subcommittee. It was just about the the project that was ongoing. We did ask for some some updates of that. Who's are you well equipped to give a high level summary of the feedback we got? <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I should have taken some notes. Basically, they're they're wrapping up um, the the most significant phase. Of that yeah. probably Wendy. He sent that update two weeks ago, right? And, he said we have about two weeks left. Yeah, but I think they have some other stuff to do after that. I, I, I would say middle of August. Okay. I'm sure. But we did share that feedback, I think. Did we share it with the, Ellen shared it with, with Horse Hills, right? Or, I'm, I'm sorry, no. Who? Did we share it with anyone? We shared it with the subcommittee. Well, he was the, the chair. The chair was here. Um, yeah, but the feedback we got from yeah, I don't Eversource. know if Ellen did or not. I guess I'll go back and look at that then. Um, next item under other businesses, uh, subcommittee appointments. Now, I think there are quite a few of them. I think. So just some feedback, some background on this. We did change last year the term to mirror. Uh, the terms had been expiring in July, but last year we did make them so that they expired the last day of June. So really we should have probably dealt with this a month ago. Um, you got this document, right? Can we just do them in groups, you think? Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't, uh, do we need to get their approval? We don't need their approval. No, I think we just, like for instance, I think we would just, uh, we have three renewals for Greater Woods. Uh, which include Gage, Steve Marble, and Jeffrey LaCours. And 
And these dates are going to be 631 instead of 731? Is that you had said earlier? Yes. Mm -hmm. 630. Yep. And some other feedback. I, we, we got uh, some clarification from community development. Was the uh, So the ex officio, we don't need to a, a, approve or appoint a person into the ex officio role. The subcommittee does that internally. We simply approve the extension of that individual. Does that sound consistent, Gage, with the way we've done it in the past? No, not at all. No. Because the ex officio member was the MCC member that was on that commission. Mm -hmm. if, and, and if there was more than one, we did it, it, was, it was the one that was, then, then, then the commission, then the committee voted on it. Like Matt, both Matt and I are on Greater Woods mm -hmm. subcommittee. And Matt was chair and I was ex officio. But that was determined by the, that was determined by that group. That group. But right. that was because there was two of us on it. Right. So there's, yeah. there's, so there's one, one. If there's only one, yeah, you're kind of, yeah, we, we we're automatically ex officio because we'd be at these meetings to be able to pass the information back and forth. So that was, mm -hmm. but, but again, if it's saying that it has to be done, then that means that the ex officio member of that subcommittee should be here for meeting updates. I would think. Okay, yeah, I didn't interpret it that way. I interpreted that we don't have to make a motion to make someone the ex officio. They are by default right. the ex officio. Yeah, well, again, you, this is my understanding. The ex officio was the person that is mm -hmm. relaying, is the conduit between the subcommittee and this, right. this group. So they would have to be here for the updates if mm -hmm. there is any. Yeah. Which is fine, but I mean, if that's the way we want to run. I don't know why any of the subcommittees would choose to do it that way. I. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't we don't have to vote on ex officio uh, apparently uh, not. members here being on the subcommittee as ex officios. Uh, uh, you know, I guess not. Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> mm -mm. I thought it was this commission's representative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. That's yeah. So maybe maybe we don't have to vote. Maybe just that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Okay. Then. Well, then that's fine. When when it, when there's when there's two people on on the commission, then the the local board can choose. The mm -hmm. local Which one of the two? Yeah. Does that sound okay for everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably need to make some little adjustments in uh, the bylaws for each of the subcoms because I don't think that's in there. Is it in there at all? I looked at one of them. I don't. I think the ex officio members in there because it's it, it gives you the lineage of right. who's who is the who are the members and the voting members. But we always did the two just because it made sense. Mm -hmm. So might want to. We just got to go pull pull a set of the. Because they should all pretty much be the same, so we just go pull a, put a bylaw from any one of them and look at it. So it's just look at the. We'd also have to change it if we uh, change the terms for conservation members on these. Because at least for Sklar, I believe it says three-year terms in the bylaws. The ex officio. No, not for ex officio. Oh, okay. Just in general. Okay, so should we start with Greater Woods? Were there any, as far as we know, no new uh, members have expressed interest in joining the Greater Woods subcommittee? N not that are up for appointment, no. So I guess the motion is uh, to, to renew Gage's um, appointment through 6-30-2023. Uh, Steve Marble through 6-30-2024 and Jeffrey LaCours through 6-30-2025. So I'll second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by me, second by Gage. All in favor? All right. Motion carries 6-0. Um, Horse Hills, as far as we know, is there anyone else? Expressed interest in 
All right, so uh, the motion is um, to approve a new term for Ellen Cobb uh, through 6-30-2023. Second by Dave. Uh, all in favor? All right, motion passes six to zero. Now, Scalar, Mike, you had uh, some interested um, people, right? Five of them. So I'll let you make this motion. Do you want to talk to, uh, tell us about those five? Yeah. Uh, well, it's not on here, is it? I have your email with the five names, if you want. Yeah. Um, all right. So I sent an email to them, letting them know they can come. Uh, I guess two of them are at either work or camp. Um, so the others, I guess, just didn't want to come. <laughs> or they were at work or something. Yeah. Uh, so uh, five people applied. Uh, they didn't specify whether they wanted alternate or member. Uh, four of them showed up to our last meeting, uh, but we didn't have them seated in time, so we didn't have a quorum, even though we had seven people there. Uh, but they were very interested and uh, engaged, and uh, Katie Le Little, who I'm recommending for member is a professional architect and she said she'd like to do our map for us because she has the programs and stuff like that so I believe she'll be very uh, you know you know that word uh, Karen Maylett is another one uh, Kareen Dunn Allison Mitchell and Derek Trippett have all applied uh, so, yeah, they seem like solid people to me. Which was the other lady that was with us when we did the walk down there? It was, uh, Katie Little and, uh, I want to say Karen. I get her and Kareen, uh, mix up because it's one letter off. All right, so you want to make a motion? I can't make a motion. Oh, you can't. <laughs> Dave can. I make a motion to accept these people to the SCLAC committee. Well, well you got to. Uh, right here. Figure out, right? Altern yeah. Yeah. Alternates versus yeah, full members. This is members. Seven. We've got Katie Little and Karen Millette for full member. For alternates, we get Karen Dunn, Allison Mitchell, and Derek Trippett. Kareem done. And does that bring you to humility? <clears throat> but first, we have to remove one alternate for an activity. I put that on the email too. Mm -hmm. I think if they vanish, I don't know that we necessarily need to remove them. I, think. I tried contacting, but it's disappeared. So what does the charter say? How many people can be on the Scalar subcommittee? Uh, three alternates, um, seven members. So we have me, Dave, Tom Martinson and uh, Mark Todarski as members. I leave three openings. Is, really? Am I right, Mike B? So uh, the four people. Tom, Mark, Mike. Dave. Yeah, and uh, Anita asked to be a. Oh yeah. Anita asked to be put as a alternate, right? Oh, she did. Didn't tell me. Oh, I think I, I saw the. Movie, I thought this the email was to everybody back. Oh. This was a few months ago. Oh, I didn't get it. <laughs> did you do you remember that, Dave? Yeah. Yep. I think she asked to be not could because of her. She condition. wanted to be part of the group. Right. Oh, yeah, she that's was, one. Because of medical, she was kind of stepping back, but yeah. she wanted to yeah. leave mm -hmm. if she just puts up. You know, which was yeah. awesome. She's just a great person. Yeah, she's she's recovering, so hopefully we'll see her soon. <clears throat> so I'd like to keep her where she is for now. So that makes uh, five members and two openings for that, three openings for alternate. 
Really? I just haven't seen Anita for a long time. Or is it full, full, four full members and one alternate? It's uh, so right now we have five full members. So it's Mark, me, Dave, uh, Anita, and Tom. That's five. And Nicole is the only mm -hmm. uh, alternate. So Anita's full term, is it going to be as an alternate or a full member? She's asked to be an alternate, right? Did she ask for an yeah, alternate? Yeah, you can put step her down. I guess we could. If that's what she's wanted, we're happy to... Well, you don't want to stress from the recovery right. period either. Just Thrilled that she wants to still be right, involved. Yeah. If she yeah. wants to be an alternate, let her be an alternate, right? Well, okay. I didn't get the email, so I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Whatever works. Well, do you know the expirations? For yeah, so what everybody? are the term expirations? Oh, geez. <laughs> well, don't ask me for that. Mine just changed. You want to just stagger them? Yeah. Yeah, we should stagger them so that you're not having full turnover of the board. Mm -hmm. You have a progressive. Mm hmm. So, Mike, if you have a list and you can just stagger the years, mm -hmm. so like yeah. one, two, and three years? Or? Yeah, one, two, and three. So, June 30th, 2023, right. June 30th, 2024, June 30th, 2025. Yeah. Do we know the existing people's terms so that? There, uh, Anita's next year. Well, so if Anita's, if Anita's stepping down the alternate, Right. You should. We should appoint someone to fulfill the rest of her role. Right. So that yeah. could be a twenty twenty three one. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's do. Um, let's do a. Either Corrine or Allison. You and Dave pick one. What do you want? First one. Yeah. Thank you. Corrine. It's not like Karine. we're going to ask someone not to be a part of it when their term expires. Well, we're right, just going to yeah. renew them. We just want to be consistent yeah. with the, yeah. the yeah. charter and keep it with the charter. All right. So that'll, Karine's will be next year, right? So that's 23. Uh, I don't even have these names. Katie, 25. And uh, Karen will be 24. Yeah. I guess I'll take that back just to make sure I get the spellings of their names correct all right. when we put it into uh, the minutes. All right. A motion. I guess we're going to need to restate the motion, right? We've kind of lost. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm see if they're going to accept us doing them all in a big group like that. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see if they accept us doing it all one big group like that. Yeah, let's break it into two. That's probably going to make it easier. So um, the motion is uh, full time memberships uh, of the SCLAR subcommittee for Katie Little. Expiring June 30th, 2025. For Corrine Millette, expiring June 30th, 2023. Um, and that essentially that's fulfilling the remainder of the current full time, full term. And then who's the third full member? It's uh, Karen. Oh. Uh, uh, Karen Millette and Corrine Dunn is the yep. other one. Through June thirtieth, twenty twenty-four. Did I get that? Someone would like to second? Second. Uh, thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right. Any further discussion? Did I get that right? We think. Perfect. 
Okay, all in favor? Motion carries, six to zero. All right, so the only remaining order of business for Sklar is um, Anita for alternate. Thank you, Mike. Anita. Do you have to remove Nicole Ferris, or is it assumed? We've never voted to. She's vote. missed more than four meetings, yeah. right, in a, in a um, row. Yeah, I think that's that's right in the bylaws or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five. All right, Anita as alternate member through 2024. This is my motion. Sorry, um, Allison Mitchell through as an alternate through June 30th, 2025. And just to stagger them, Derek Trippett as alternate member through June 30th, 2023. All right, that's the motion. Dave seconds. Uh, all in favor? Motion carries six to zero. All right, finally. Wildcat Falls subcommittee. Well, don't we have to do the two listed for Sklar? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank and, you, and Cindy. Probably, it's probably a good idea to say the person's name that is no longer going to be on the subcommittee since we would have appointed mm. her in another meeting so that it's official, maybe. Right. Yep. What was that person's name? Nicole Christman, Kristen Men. Okay. Finally, then. Uh, so it's um, yeah, it's morning, Christian. He has a double S. I think. Is it just? Uh, doesn't she have two last names? Kristen Men. Something. Yeah. Um, morning, Kristen Men. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, motion to extend. Uh, to the Scholar, on the Scholar Subcommittee, the terms of Michael Druin through 6-30-2023 and Mark Tudowski through 6-30-2025. Second. Second by Dave. All in favor? Motion carries, 6-0. to zero. And then finally, uh, we have four terms to extend for the Wildcat Falls Subcommittee. Uh, I'll make a motion to extend the term for Mike Boisvert through 6-30-2023, Liz Petrides through 6-30-2024, Karen Labonte through 6-30-2025, and Andrew Duane through 6-30-2025. Second, second. Second by Dave. Any discussion needed? No? Nope. All in favor? Aye. All right. <laughs> motion carries 6-0. All right, um, subcommittee updates. Are there any? All right, so much. Good thing I read it down now. <laughs> now, I want to make sure you did not have a meeting. No. Because you did not have a quorum. No. So, just, so there probably isn't a whole lot of subcommittee well, update to have. There's updates, okay. but not because of the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and just generally speaking, as a housekeeping note, these subcommittee updates, obviously, if something earth-shattering is happening on a parcel, that's noteworthy, uh, misuse of a parcel or that sort of thing. But we don't have to give expansive updates uh, uh, of everything that's occurred in a parcel for any of the parcels. I mean, right. this is more to cascade that, you know, to share that feedback from a previous meeting uh, than other things, especially if, if the committee during a meeting has said we, we could use a little more support from the Conservation Commission on this item or that item. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, so apparently some dog got sick there, um, and then I found out that the E. coli's high there was tested high at the boat launch. Uh, it was 200 and something was the number, so. Yes, it's a Sahegan River also, yeah. it's high. Yeah, and those, are, those are reported, those are reported mm -hmm. publicly. So I don't know if we should put a sign or something if they don't let your dog drink the water you, you, I those are those are reported publicly water the mm -hmm. water quality uh, and, and as quick as it happened it could be gone tomorrow mm -hmm. 
you know, you get right. this you get this monstrous rain and it's gonna it's gonna wash the water's gonna be really filthy for a while and then all of a sudden it's gonna get upstream water and be gone. Mm -hmm. So all you're, right. gonna, you're gonna be down there all day taking it up, putting it down, taking it up, putting it down. Mm -hmm. The state has a pretty Yeah. You could always put something in the kiosk to say check this website right. for updates yeah. or That's, something so yeah. that it's yeah. not mm -hmm. taking, you know, on and off. Just a good place to check. Yeah. Uh, the entire shore of Sklar is covered in Nuddles weed. I thought it was milfoil, but I got some of it out and look at it closely. It's not invasive here, but uh, it's just acting as a debris catch from Manchester. It looks pretty trashy. So, um, the Merrimack River Watershed Council is very interested in working with Sklar to develop a, some sort of invasive management plan. And they said they'd like to develop it with us and then present it to you guys. So I, I think that's pretty good. They said they have some federal funding for that. So I think it would be, you know. Uh, so pretty much done the master plan. We'd like to present it next month if there's time. If not, then we can do it in September. Preferably the second half of August. Um, our next meeting is August 8th, right? Uh, and then the one after that is the 22nd. So I guess when the plans, is it going to have that, um, what was it called? The tree survey. Tree survey. Yeah, I mean, you'll well, have all just that. for the picnic area though. First fifty feet from the shore. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, if it's complete, it's got to be part of the packet. Um, but if it's complete by, I can't imagine it would be for the meeting on the eighth. I mean, we're mm -hmm. we're we're one week from this middle deadline for that. Is there a way that we could submit it to somebody who could look at it and maybe give us an opportunity of where we're lacking? Sure. Yeah. You do it. You can do it. We're, we're you writing can, blind. Yeah, you can do it whenever. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. We 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 yeah. did that. We did that. So we've done that with a lot of the master plans. If you guys, yeah. I'd be happy to share it. And That'd be awesome. Yeah. Share share it and, and we'll you know we can make comments and, but it's you can share it out to mm -hmm. us as a group. None of us can answer you back as a group. It's you know I'm going to have to right. send something back to you. You know, it's going to have to be one on one going back, but you can send it out to the group. It's, mm -hmm. you know, okay. it's just in yeah, market, mm -hmm. market draft. Getting a lot of stuff, but it's like, okay, yeah. what are we missing? We're missing yeah. something, but you know, yeah. it's like we like somebody you know, who's done this before to look at it and guide us. We just need some help. It's just, it's just, it's just the stewardship. You know, what, are you, what are what are the guiding principles of the of the property? Yeah. So, yeah, and. Uh, Engage brings up a good point too. We we do that quite frequently. Like if you know if I need someone to re look you know look over a memo or something before I send it to the planning board, mm -hmm. there's a lot of that feedback. It's just it's got to happen individually because otherwise it becomes a meeting. Yep, awesome. So uh, we weren't you know planning on a different parking area. Uh, so when we present, do we have to present that parking area to you guys or do we do it to the town council? Because it's on their property. I think the Scalar plan. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's not to plan. us. <laughs> yeah, it's not our property. It's not our yeah. property. It's not to us. All right. So I just didn't want. to I mean, jump it would be great. It, I, we'd like to know about it, obviously, because we're we're you know you're, you're gonna you can't you shouldn't be going up there speaking on our behalf. So we should yeah, be going right. and giving it as a as a group. But yeah, that's gonna have to go in front of town council. And it's still part of the master plan, even though yeah. it's on. Yeah, Tom, that would be the part of the master plan you're showing us, right? Yeah, yeah, it just yeah. I would think that would be the logical uh -huh. sequence of events. Show us the master plan, and then we'll figure out how much. This probably, if it involves the you know town land, it probably is going to require some, some, some pre work by yeah, we'll Kyle get, get or their input, we'll get their input and then present it to town council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because right now, it, and it's if it's minor, like a, it may be something that Paul McCallie and Kyle. Yeah. D deal with I mean they had no problems Paul you know he authorized the position the boulders on town land to block that north of that trail that goes up north 
Yep. I mean, we didn't have to present that in front of the whole town council. That was yep. something he felt like he could sanction at his level. Yeah. So the parking lot's pretty much going to be a square drawn, and I'm hoping that they do the rest because I, I have no idea about what DPW mm -hmm. does with that. Oh, you mean you mean if they put one uh, on the other side? Yeah. Pretty uh, much draw yeah. a square for the area. Here you go. There's probably, because that's within 250 feet of the river, there's probably going to be all kinds of grief to go through to get that. Yeah, so I want to pass like it tree off Tree removal and that sort of thing? Yeah, it's not, it's well, not going to be simple, I don't think. Well, I was thinking about something like Greeley Park. You know how they park in between the trees? So when you go, you know the picnic area for Greeley Park with the, the grills? And they have the tables and they do the parties and stuff there. So you go down that road and you park in between the trees. So they kept all the trees, it's just parking between them. So I think that'd be a, at least for now. Yeah, we're, I'm silly to talk about now. We can yeah. put it on the agenda yeah. if it's part of the master plan. Well, one thing to remember is uh, Greeley Park is, you know, it's in the town, you know, the Scalar properties riverfront and there's certain laws the state has laws about so deep about tree removal and well I'm, kind of, I'm kind using that as an example because Greeley Park that example avoids cutting any trees at all because you can fit cars in between what's there already you just got to cut the the grass and not weed and whatever else not not weed uh, bittersweet that's all all right. Any other subcommittee updates? Yeah. So uh, we had, I was not able to attend our work day. I had to travel. But uh, so the balusters are up, are replaced. Uh, we're going to try to pick a new date to put the bridge in. But the uh, couple people got together and put balusters up and they went and looked at the other parcels, the other sections of the projects that we want to do. And hopefully we're going to have some, some plans when we get together for the next one. What's this location? Uh, this is the on the education loop trail that comes from the outdoor classroom that first over that first deck is that's the one that they all the polishers were kicked off so those all been replaced um, we're gonna probably go through at some point in time and, and open that opening back up a little bit it's looking out on a field now because the pond you know pond's gone but we are seeing some beaver activity there so the water's starting to back up a little bit so we're seeing a successional pond come back which is kind of interesting um, but and we have not yet heard back from uh, Lowe's when we're going to get the new uh, roof tiles for the outdoor classroom but the pictures you guys all saw the pictures they were good enough you could see a little light spot up in the roof there but it's all right they had to do it they were happy yeah they were happy so but that's it thank you Anyone else? Subcommittee updates? No. Hmm? I, like, I like the visual aid. <laughs> no, he was just one. He was just wondering why I was on, on my phone. I was zooming in on the outdoor classroom on I my <laughs> phone. <laughs> I like the visual aid. Can aids. you see the hole? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Skylight. <laughs> Skylight. <laughs> um, the only other item under other business was discussion regarding other items of concern. I don't think we really added this. To, I called Stephanie today. I, I think I might have miscommunicated, like poorly wrote something in my instructions or, or my feedback on the agenda. So that made it in there. I guess that was the catch-all for commissioner comments. Um, but really, that wasn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I don't care for the way it's worded because it, it begs someone to. Not that any of us would do this. It begs someone to introduce something. Um, to one of our meetings that wasn't on the agenda that should have been on the agenda in a more clear and transparent way. So I'll, I'll reword that for the next one. Um, Good idea. But that brings us to uh, the minutes. Who wants to have at that? I just had one change, one thing. And then I, I'll just do that, and then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Someone want to make a motion? Um, 
motion to approve the July 11th Merrimack Conservation Commission meeting with the uh, notes with the following changes. Second. Motion by Cindy, second by Mike. Who wants to go first? Okay, so on page six, line 259 and 260, Mr. Gagnon should be Mr. Tordarski. Page one, um, we need to add Gina Rosati to the members of the commission absent. And you don't have to write this down. I've okay. written it. Oh, thank yeah. you. <coughs> um, and then page two, line 70. <coughs> Change sire to site. Hmm. Page three, line one twenty-five. Uh, just change the spelling for revised. Page four, <coughs> line one forty-one. Just uh, update the spelling for reconsider. Hmm. And then page four, line one sixty-five. Um, Stephanie probably put that no first, first name mentioned because maybe she thought maybe we had it, but I don't think we need to put that in, right, in the actual notes, no first name mentioned. Oh, no, probably not. So I'll just delete that. She probably thought maybe we knew it and she could put it in. Um, Daniel, page, this is first name. Page five, line 190. Um, just add each spring for their GIS system. Page five, line two twelve. Um, add I I don't know what he s said, but what he maybe to said only one right thing to do. Mm -hmm. So unless he said you know something else, but just add thing, and then. Line 214, add at the end of that part of land, that is town property. Page 6, line 233, uh, just update the spelling of revised. Page seven, line 280. Um, I think that should be which took three years instead of has. Yeah. And has just got in there twice. Um, page, still on page seven, line 298. Delete two at the end of the sentence. And then 299, delete the at the beginning of the sentence. Page 9. Oh Lord. Line 352. Change service to serve. Just add it. Questioned if it would pose PFAS health hazard. And then page 10, line 400. Delete was. At the end of that sentence. And then page 10, 
uh, line 433, 434, and 436, um, change field farms to fields farm. And that's all I have. I just had one on page eight. Um, page eight, line 342. The motion was actually to approve the articles or rules of procedure as amended, and that amendment was to add statutory business and commissioner comments to the proposed agenda. And that's it. Uh, I went back and confirmed that. That's at one hour and 27 minutes into the meeting. And that was the motion that was seconded and that we voted on. Anyone else? Are you doing minutes today? Hmm? Are you doing the minutes today? What do you mean? Who's doing the minutes today? Who's recording the minutes? I, it, it means. Oh, yeah. well, we get help with that from. Okay. Yeah. We get tremendous support with that. Um, yeah, Stephanie does a great job. Yeah. So, anyone else? Any comments? No? All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes as amended? No. Motion carries six to nothing. <laughs> um, Commissioner, comments? I think we'll start at this end this time. Dave? I think everything's flowing. Um, a lot of people are down the park, a lot of positive comments. So I just want to keep it going. So, I should have said, too, the, the, we did not have a non public session that kind of got by us on the agenda, too. There was no non public schedule for tonight. No. I was oh. wondering, because I, I was wondering what we we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, me too. I was like, no. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like this new agenda kind of threw, threw us first. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mike? Yeah, the the hike club postponed their hike because it was 100 degrees. I I almost did it, and someone else convinced me to postpone. <laughs> uh, What's the new date? Uh, it'll be uh, not this Sunday, but the Sunday after. That's it. That's it. Cindy. Um, just that I did watch the last meeting and. So I wanted to just let everybody know, like, as far as the deeds go, you know, that you're talking about, like, Horse Hill. We didn't buy Horse Hill. The town bought Horse Hill. So those are completely different deeds than property that we as a commission bought, would buy. Like Sklar, we bought as a commission. So typically with any property that we buy, it's going to have all of those caveats in there. You know, it's kind of boilerplate for a conservation property. If not, we wouldn't really be buying it because we're buying it, you know, to protect the land or in Sklar's case to protect the river, you know. Um, if the town buys land and wants us to manage it, then there's going to be all different kinds of deed. But really for us, if we bought it, it's always going to have protection language in there, you know, because mm -hmm. even if we might not vote, to clear cut the whole thing, another commission could if there's no protections in there, you know. So that's kind of t why we have those typical things in there. But, mm. so. My comment to that would be we spent $150,000 on a property we can't even put a car on. But we're not buying it to put cars on. As a commission, we're, well, I mean, I mean parks it, But if we different. want to use it to hike and stuff, we need a place to park and things like that. So that's why a parking lot would be nice and, but like I said, the commission decided, the commission is, so so well, be it. Scalar in particular had those covenants on there before we purchased it. I have no idea. They, 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 it did. Yeah. It did. We, the, old, the things we put on there are, you know, we put it into conservation trust through perpetuity, mm -hmm. but there was the, we, we buy, we, you can make the deeds, easily make the deeds more restrictive, mm -hmm. taking covenants off them, you got to go to court. Right. My thing would be like, so we, we're by an area. Yeah. Look at it. Oh, let's. We need a parking area for people to yep. park. So let's assign an area to park. So that's what I'd be looking for in the future. Is not just a blanket can't use everything. Let's look at it and understand what the draw would be to the area. And if we can't use the land, we can't even park, you know, a car on it. My idea would be we wouldn't buy the property. Be 
because we would get lack of use out of it. See, I look at this as that was supposed to be a you know, conservation plus a park. That was in the deed. It said that in the very beginning of the deed. It said conservation area and a park. So in the deed, it says it wants to be a park, but we don't want it to be a park because we can't park at the park. You can, park, you can park up at the head and walk yeah. in. Yeah. Then you back your boat all the way down. Yeah, well, that's well, that's town property. That's yeah, not that's ours. Well, yeah. I, know, I know. So that's. Yep. that's no, I just think different. it was a bad purchase. That's all. But that's a good call out too with the uh, why Horse Hills is different. If the town the part purchased it. Yeah, that we just manage mm -hmm. it. We didn't purchase it. They could bulldoze Horse Hill. I mean, if there's, you know, yeah. <laughs> wetland restrictions, obviously, but. They voted that as town forest? The, uh, no. It's not designated as a town forest. Nature preserve? Yeah. Or? It's, a, it's a nature preserve, yeah. But I, I just wanted to explain about, you know, why Horse Hill's different and why there's different deeds like you said if there's some restrictions already you know but again if at least in the past since I've been on it we purchase it for conservation property reasons not you know for necessarily for access because taxpayers want clean air they want clean water you know there's a nice place to park to go hike there is a place to park you can no. go hike there but okay okay I'm done, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Just moving on. nope thank you <laughs> I only had a couple of comments. I did. I told you last time I would send out the um, GZA final report. Hopefully, everyone got that. Yeah. It came through. It wasn't too big to go through on an email, right? Okay. Um, Meredith Campbell. I don't know if everyone got the email or it was just came to me. This was someone, someone interested in doing an Eagle Scout, or, or not an Eagle Scout, a uh, a Girl Scout project. Um, like a middle school yeah, level it went, one. It went to everybody. It did. Okay. That's yeah, I did follow up with her. It's private property. She's looking at doing it with, but I did tell her I would uh, put her in contact with Horse Hill subcommittee because um, she, she, you know, I tried to, you know, t talk to her about some of the other projects we have, and I know there's a small punch list that we heard about last meeting at Horse Hill, so uh, she may pursue that. But I'll oh. I'll put them in contact with each other. So they're looking just to do a project not mm -hmm. necessarily at this other location at the other location was what she asked about yeah she wanted our our yeah. feedback on yeah. you know they, they want to build some trails and things they just mm -hmm. want they want to talk to someone like how you know how do, what why why do we where do we build the trail and how mm -hmm. i think that's that's what i took away from i it, did so. too and I, I spoke to her mm -hmm. um yeah I, I tried to persuade her that Horse Hill might be a, a better place or rather than private property where there's that risk that it's not accessible. Yeah. Well, it's kind of strange that private property would ask a Girl Scout to come and mm. Mm. do something. I think they're involved with that property. Mm. But, okay. hm. but that was my only comments. Mike? Uh, no comment. Gage? I'm good. No comment. All right. You want to make a final motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Gage. <laughs> Second by Mike. Yes. All in favor? All right. We got 737. Meeting adjourned. Is a record? Yeah, I guess so.